Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Soul Sparks. Every week I bring you some new tips and techniques for mixed media painting, inspirational exercises, and even studio tips. This week and next week both, I'm going to be sharing with you some really great products from Seth Apter, and his shop is called The Altered Page. He's developed some paints and different products that I'm going to be playing with. This is called Ice, and they are a translucent type of paint glaze, a mixture. And I'm also going to be exploring some of his opaque inks. But there are just so many different things you can do with these, and I want to explore beyond maybe what he's already done with them. And you can check out his uh, site where he has the products for sale, and I'll put that link in the comments. But first, I want to talk to you about what are the difference between what this is and what you would get with a acrylic paint gel mixture. So these are already mixed up in these great little travel pouches, which is nice, or I call them travel pouches, but because you don't have to worry about them leaking when you are traveling and you can squeeze out the, the product. The main difference I have found in working with these as opposed to mixing up my own acrylic with, uh, say, a soft gel gloss is that these dry very quickly. Whereas when you put an acrylic paint into a, a gloss or a matte gel for that matter, that extends the drying time. So this is kind of doing the opposite of what happens when you make your own mixture. Now, with that said, it's great for working on small areas like these different papers I'm gonna explore with. But let's say I wanted to work on a larger surface and this is drying very quickly. You might wanna just work small areas at a time. Well, let's just, first of all, let's just take a look at what we're gonna do here. And I've got an assortment of papers, everything from um, cardstock, which is like a, a mailing label, to this is a decorative paper that I bought at the craft store. I've got just copy paper, book pages from an old book. And this is mixed media paper. And this is from a drawing pad. So it's really not meant to take wet media, but we're gonna do some experiments. And then I've got some non-absorbent papers. And there's something else around here. Ah, uh, yes. And then I'm gonna show you on a panel. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm gonna begin on the mixed media paper. And I wanna just show you how these begin to mix. And we're gonna do what I call optical mixing, which I'm gonna put this on here and just go really thin. So you can see where it's thick. It's kind of opaque, but when you can really pull it down, you're gonna get almost like this, just a hint of color. And that is what pretty much a glaze is. It gives you that, just that little hint of the color. But because of the viscosity of this, you can go both thick and thin. And I think that makes this interesting. I can also kind of draw into it and get some different effects. Now I want that to, to dry before I go on, and I'm gonna put another layer on. You notice that I'm wearing gloves. I mean, I always wear gloves, but I recommend wearing gloves with this product just because it's very plasticky. And I noticed when I first started doing it and I wasn't wearing gloves, that it was really hard to get off of my, my hands. So if, you'd, if you're not used to wearing gloves, you might want to consider it using this. 
So I'm going to take, um, this one is a beautiful turquoise. These are actually windows into the product itself. So you can see the, the color. Now while I'm waiting for that one to dry, I'm going to mix two colors together while they're both wet. So this would be your more traditional, you know, color mixing where you're taking two colors and blending them. And let's go ahead and try it with this and see what we get. Mm. Okay, I want to put them side by side. And you see how they can stay separate because of that viscosity of them. And I'm going to start to pull one over the other. And you can have these beautiful blending techniques where you pull it all together, or you can also do like these striations. Isn't that beautiful? Now here I'm going to get more of a purple because I've mixed the two. look at this one over here. It's still a little wet. Down here it's dry because I put it on thin there. And that's the beauty of this is how quickly it can dry. And let me just get my heat gun and finish drying this. This is not quite dry, but that's okay. I want to show you the, the blending on this. And later I'm going to show you a very cool thing to do with the thicker ice and the heat gun. So you can see the different manner of you can see how when I wait for one color to dry and I put the next color on top, this is what I call optical mixing. And you're actually building these layers of color and they're not mixing. So the colors are staying, the kind of the turquoise green and the magenta. Whereas here, I started to get the purple. Just like within any kind of glazing, you can build this up. But what I really like about this is the thickness of it and how quickly it can dry and be able to build up these layers. And I think that's a real uh, plus in working with this product. And this was just on a mixed media paper. So let's see what it does on some different kinds of surfaces. Now, this one, is a, it's like a UPO paper. And I'm going to put both some of the ice and I'm going to introduce some of the, this is Seth Apter's pigment inks. And these are opaque inks. And they're very highly saturated. So if I were to put this on, oops, a little brush came off. Let me try that again. There we go. It's like a nail polish. And you see how thick it can go on? I'll put some on there. But if I add water to it, the pink one's my water. You can see how saturated that is. So it becomes transparent, whereas here it's opaque. But look at how rich that is. Lots of color. More glazing. You start to get these beautiful, rich layers. This is so much fun. So whether you want to use that ink thick or if you want to go really thin like this. So let's put some things together here. This is a, a red. And I'm going to put some on thick.
and I'm working on the UPO, the non-absorbent paper. So this is going to stay wet for a long time, as opposed to the mixed media paper where it really kind of soaked in right away. And I can even go back to white. Whereas here, I kind of get back there, there was a hint of color. This, it pretty much stays that way, white. Let me get this plate in here because it's going to get really runny. And I'm going to take this, oops. <laughs> Do you like that? Here, let's try that again. I have to remember I haven't closed the, the lid. And I just want this to mix with the two. And I'm not even using a, a brush here except to just kind of direct it around. Here's that ink is thicker. Now this is on a non-absorbent paper. I'm going to set this aside and I want to show you kind of the same thing on this drawing paper because it's going to be very absorbent. So I'm going to first take a stencil and I'm going to put this through the, the stencil. Now when you're using this with a stencil, you, you make sure that you clean your stencil off right away because the ice will stick to that and make it really difficult to clean off. Now if you can see this stencil's kind of got some wonky areas which I'm not concerned with. I just want to get a, kind of a variety of thickness and thinness. Does that kind of make sense? Thick and thin? All right. Now I'm just going to take this book page because this is a cool thing to do. Just because you want to clean off whatever is left on there before you stick it in. Hardly anything, so I guess I was pretty good. I just stuck that into some water. And now I want to take another... plate because I'm going to use this dark ink. This one is after dark. And I'm going to spray the water onto the plate. You can see quite a bit of water. And I'm going to take my brush and just start to let this flow on top. Can you see that, how it's going around? Yeah. I don't want to drag my brush into the turquoise because that's still wet. But I just want this to begin to move over it. So I'm going to spray a little water onto here. I like this black, especially it reminds me of uh, graphite. Now I'm just lightly running the brush over some of the areas I think might be dry. And here's another thing you can do is you can take, this is rubbing alcohol and I can just spray it on here and it just makes that 
wet pigment ink move around. Now, it was very wet, so I knew it was going to kind of move out of the way of the alcohol, but because it was so wet, it's going to run back together. Let's take a look at this one while that's kind of drying. And this is the non-absorbent one. So you can see how much it's still moving around. And um, <laughs> let me get my heat gun. What I'm going to, well, I'm going to try and do it here where it's really thick and I'm taking the heat gun. It's going to begin to bubble and you can come back in with other paints and rub it into that bubbling area. And I'll show you one that's finished that I've done that on. The main problem with this is there's so many things you can try to do that it's kind of like going down the rabbit hole and you end up going, oh, I could do this, I could do that. So I'm going to show you some things that I've done. We might not have time to show all of them, but I'll show you the bits and pieces and the final result. I had to stop on this one because as you can see, the UPO starts to warp a little bit as opposed to a regular paper. So I just wanted to get the, the pigment ink dry. So this is how you can get these different effects with the thick and the thin. Now let's look at it back here on this drawing paper, which is really not meant for wet media. And this area where I sprayed that alcohol, it's kind of creating this very subtle effect within the paper, which is causing it to absorb differently. You can see this area right in here. And let's see if I can get this dry. This is going to dry a lot faster because the paper is so absorbent. What I really like about this is this kind of effect right in here. And that's happening because of the paper. So you really want to start to experiment with all different kinds of papers that you have. And I'm going to try this with the alcohol again. And now I'm going to leave this flat and just clean off the rest of my paint onto here. And then kind of let it run. And I'll come back to this. I'm just going to set it aside and I'll let this kind of move around, keep it flat, and then as it dries, I'll do the same thing. So let me get some of these out of the way. So again, we have the optical mixing, the layers, and then the blending of the colors. And you can blend any number of these colors together. Now I want to just quickly show you putting it on top of um, decorative paper. I mean, you could use, you know, papers that are like wallpapers or wrapping paper. These are scrapbook papers. Now this color is copper and it tends to be more opaque. Let's just see what it looks like over this kind of gray and, and white. You see how opaque it is? But if I go thin enough, I can get like a, a little bit of a glaze to it. Uh, meaning just a hint of the color. And here I'm going to keep it thicker. But I love the texture that you can get using the knife. I wouldn't try this with a brush. You, you know, it's not the right viscosity for that. So I'm going to clean some of this off and just show it to you over this book page. And if I go thin, you can really start to see the writing. And this is, I think, a better illustration than what this was. So let me just bring in some of this since I have it open. 
Do you see the difference of how more how much more transparent that color is than the metallic. So when you go to experiment with the different metallics, just realize that they are a bit more opaque. I'm going to come back in and try and add some of that in here. Might be a little too dry, but let's see what we get. Yeah, it's already dry. So I'm not getting that mixing like I did on the, on the page. So here is the um, kind of the two colors blended together on cardstock. And I'm going to make a few of these because next week we're going to use these for an, as a layer. There we go. So remember this one. Let's try it on this panel. This is a panel from Ampersand and it's a clay board which means it's got a, a clay surface to it. And I want to get this somewhat wet. Let's try a different color. This is an interesting color, and it goes almost yellow when it gets really thin. So let's try that. A little dried piece in there. This is the first time I've tried this on the clay board. And because I had that surface really wet, it's not going to dry fast. So here's kind of a solution to say if you wanted to work with these on a larger surface, I would recommend using a panel that's not going to dry as fast. And you can see how workable this is for a length of time. So that's another option, is the clay board. Now, there are a couple of other things that we can do with some other papers. Let me get these out of the way. You see how these are wanting to kind of bend up? Once they dry, you can always just put a piece of plastic over this and weight it, and it will flatten it out. Just be very careful that when this dries, it's very tacky, it's very plasticky. So I would use some wax paper to put over it to keep it from sticking together. Because if I put another piece on top of it, it's going to want to stick to it. So wax paper in between will keep it from sticking. This is just a copy paper, and you can even use thin copy papers. Let me just try something here with my copy paper. And you can almost pull like a, a print off of this clay board, and that's how wet it stays. So that can be a really kind of fun thing to play with. See what I mean about going down this rabbit hole? It's like, this was not in my notes to do this, but um, it's always just too much fun to play. So if I take that again, this back over here and pull that off, I can begin to get these kind of layers. It's almost like I'm using this clay board as a printing plate or a jelly plate because I can put more water on here and keep it wet. Kind of drag it around too. I always like to keep an extra piece of paper, whether it's copy paper or deli sheet around, if I need to clean off stencils. And these layers will just build up and become quite beautiful. And you'll see in other projects how we'll use those papers. Now I've got here a deli sheet. And I've got a piece of rice paper. This is a texture plate. And I'm going to put the deli paper over the texture plate. You're going to notice that there's like two sides to this. 
So here the indentation is here and it's the opposite. So you might have to experiment to see which side works best. Let me get another color. Let's go with this green. You see, I'm just putting it onto the knife. My knife is a little wet. If you don't have a knife like this, you can even use like a key card. And I'm just going to transfer it over to there, spread it out. And then I'm going to be very careful to hold this in place. And I drag this over. And I get the impression. And this ice mixture has the perfect consistency to do these impressions. And you can make several different colors. You can layer these colors. And I'm going to show you one that I did that I actually painted the back on. Let me just show you with the rice paper. Now you could do the same thing with rice paper over this. I'm just going to show you a different type of texture. This is from um, like an embossing piece that you would you know, put your paper in and then run it through your embossing machine. But I'm just going to use it this way and I'm going to do the same thing with, um, let's go back to this color. And again, I'm just going to spread this onto the card, hold it in place. and drag it. Now, I just want to bring my heat gun over here. I want to get things out of the way because I'm going to have to heat this for a long time. It's important to do this when it's wet. And I just have a board here to protect my table underneath. And what we're going to be looking for is in the areas where it's thick after it starts to dry and with this heat gun it's going to bubble that paint and you'll be able to see it kind of pull up and like a balloon. Here it goes, starting to bubble. So be careful you don't burn your paper like it looks like that paper started to burn there. So it does need to get extremely hot in order to do this. So I wouldn't recommend doing it on a canvas or on a panel. But on papers, it can work quite well. And it's very interesting. I'd let this cool, and then I can come back in with some different uh, glazes, either with the ice or even using some of the uh, pigment inks, like we did in the wet application. And let me just show you a few of the papers that I've already done. So this is one on the UPO paper. You can see it started to buckle under here, but many different layers. I've been playing with this one for a couple of weeks now. This is the one I had been looking for earlier where I got some of the uh, magenta color in there with the gold. And it gets a little buckled up, but if you use this for a collage piece, you know, you'll glue it down. It'll be fine. This is just another book page with layering the glazes. This one I'll be showing you next week on some of the embossing powders and stencils that I've used. And here's one that I did on that um, embossing plate. And I painted the back of the deli paper with a white paint in order to bring the green, make it more uh, apparent. And here I could do the same thing on that side. This is a piece that I had done using both the ice and the thin powder, or the thin, the, <laughs> let me see if I can say it, the thin down pigment inks. And I even sprinkled some powders in with that and just let it move around. So you can see all the different possibilities that you can do with these. Here was one using the drawing paper. Another one where I bubbled it, and I got some really big bubbles and nice textures. And then this is the drawing paper 
that has got multiple layers of things, and I'll show you some of these next week. So there's just so many possibilities. I, I encourage you to just experiment with some different papers and the viscosities, the transparency, the opacity, and just see what you come up with. And save the papers because next week I'll be showing you some embossing powders that Seth has and a really interesting tool for creating the place where you can put the embossing powders. So I'll see you next week. And if you like the video, please share it, give us a like, and post your questions, and let's see what you make. Thanks for joining me. Join the community and share your creations on social. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section.